I'm Ivy Hostler, and this is my audience. My dog, Roxy, my mom, Jana, my dad, Lee, and our other dog, Tank. Today, we're going to discuss the fictional film, Me Before You, which was directed by Thea Sherrick and released in 2016. Me Before You follows a 31-year-old quadriplegic, Will Trainer as he has decided that he wants to end his life through medically assisted suicide. The whole movie focuses on the adventures his caretaker Lou takes him on during this six month period to try to convince him that there's more to life than just, you know, existing, which he feels like he does. She wants to show him that even though he's a quadriplegic, that he can still do things, he can still go on adventures, and that his life didn't just end. Um, Me Before You explores the support of medically assisted suicide through Will's permanently disabled low quality of life as a quadriplegic at the young age of 31 years old. Um, we The movie follows his the way his family feels about it um, and also, you know, the way Will feels about it, but mostly, most importantly, how Will knows that this is the best decision for him and his true reasoning behind it and you know, it's not just a spur of the moment kind of decision for him. So that brings us to our first movie clip, which is towards the middle of the what movie. What a cry for help, Camilla. He meant it. You know that. Now this way we can be with him, supporting him, loving him. He's my son! Yes, he's my son, too! It's his choice. This is what he wants. You know how much pain he's in. So the scene we just watched was um, a scene between Will's mom and dad as Will's mom finds the letter from the clinic in Switzerland that Will intends to go to um, to carry out his medically assisted suicide death. And um, as you see it, you know, you see the emotional side of the family where his mom just, you know, she sees the letter and is beyond devastated, but she also thinks... You know, he promised me six months, which is the time Will Paul promised them he would wait between when he told them he had completely decided that medically assisted suicide was the way he wanted to end his life until he would carry it out. And, you know, in his mom's eyes, that six months was when she was going to convince him that he didn't want to do this. But, you know, his dad, you see, you see the pain in his dad's eyes, but you also see how his dad understands where Will's coming from. In this scene, you also learn that sometime in the past, between his motorcycle accident that caused him to become a quadriplegic two years ago, up until the time of this scene, that Will has tried to commit suicide once before and was unsuccessful. And that's where his dad talks about, you know, that it wasn't just an attempt at detention. It wasn't like he was trying to make people feel bad for him. You know, he really, truly had a reasoning behind wanting to do this and, you know, why he truly supported it which leads us to talk about the social issue and how it connects with real life and that is through um 31 year old Brittany Maynard or 30 year old Brittany Maynard who was diagnosed in 2014 with terminal brain cancer and in the middle of 2016 they pretty much told her that they had exhausted all efforts that there was nothing more they could do and that she had less than six months to live. In that time, they told her that she would, you know, lose all abilities, she would lose all function, and, you know, they really were truthful and told her her death would be painful emotionally, physically, and mentally, and especially on her family. And, you know, this connects us to, it's almost, you know, it connects us with the way that Will's young, as was Brittany, and Brittany was a real person who also had a loving family who supported her and you know she wanted to end her life on her own terms but she wanted in, she didn't ask to be in the position she was in the position she was put in forced her to look at this as an option but it also helped her cope with what she was going through because in reality her death was inevitable and rather than suffering and watch her family suffer she wanted to end it on her terms when things weren't bad 
or before things got really bad. And Will and Brittany's condition is a situation in which, you know, a person was diagnosed with a terminal illness or a permanent disability. And though they're not the exact same, the concept behind both stands the same. And that, you know, Will is the representation of Brittany's battle to make her family understand, her husband understand, the legal parts of it, and then to successfully carry out her death at in October of 2016. And, you know, she has to, she gains the support of her family, although it's hard for them. They do try to support her. So in the next clip we see, we finally get to see why Will really believes that this is the way for him to carry out his death and the reasons behind it, why he is so passionate about it, even though it's not a position he wanted to be in because no one wants to be a quadriplegic or in Brittany's case, have terminal illness where they're going to die. But because he was dealt that situation, he is dealing with it and doing it in the way he believes is the best way for everyone. And so here's our third clip or second clip. You never saw me before. I loved my life. I really loved it. I can't be the kind of man who just accepts this. You're not giving it a chance. You're not giving me a chance. I have become a whole new person these last six months because of you. I know, and that's why I can't have to be tied to me. I don't want you to miss all the things that someone else could give you. And selfishly, I don't want you to look at me one day and feel even the tiniest bit of regret or pity. I would never think that. You don't know that. I can't watch you wandering around the annex in crazy dresses. We'll see you naked and not not be able to do oh god clark if you had any idea what i wanted to see you right now <laughs> i can't live like this please will please <laughs> Shh, listen this tonight being with you is the most wonderful thing you could have ever done for me. But I need it to end here. No more pain and exhaustion and waking up every morning already wishing it was over. It's not going to get better than this. The doctors know it, and I know it. When we get back, I'm going to Switzerland. So I'm asking you if you feel the things you say you feel. Come with me. I thought that I was changing your mind. Nothing was ever going to change my mind. I promised my parents six months, and that's what I've given them. So in the second clip, we see how the conversation between um, Lou and Will is on the beach of this beautiful island on yet another adventure she's taken him on. You also learn and put two and two together that it's the end of the six month period that Will has given. And um, as they're sitting there talking, you hear the way Lou believes she has truly changed his mind on medically assisted suicide and that believing that he did have a reason to live and that he could still live a life even being quadriplegic and still had adventures. But then you see Will discuss his reasonings for it. You know, he talks about specifically how, you know, he's clearly fallen in love with her and that he can't give her the life she deserves. You know, he can't do the things with her that he would want to do. And yes, he can emotionally support her and verbally, but he can't physically support her nor financially for that matter. And, you know, he doesn't feel like that's a life worth living. To him, it's like she's being cheated and deserves more. And he doesn't want to live a life where he can't give her everything she wants and needs. And so, you know, 
much like Will did in the movie, Brittany experienced those same types of issues with her family. And, you know, when it came time, she had the same type of conversation with her husband about, you know, me living a life and putting you through this isn't worth and isn't fair for what I want you to remember our marriage to be like and our love. I don't want you to think of the hard times and those awful moments. I want you to remember all the good times we had, which is, you know, the same concept. And so Will's character, although fictional, is a true representation of what Brittany Maynard experienced in Oregon in 2016. It shows how his family dealt with it and his caretaker, Lou. Um, it shows you how he really, truly suffered during that time. And his reasonings for believing that medically assisted suicide was the right way to die. Me Before You explores explored the support of medically assisted suicide through Will's life as being a quadriplegic, having to depend on someone else completely for everything he did at simply at 31 years old. Um, you know, it brings us to realize that medically assisted suicide for him and for Brittany truly was understandable and supported because it gave them more. They didn't have to suffer. They didn't have to live a life that was miserable and low quality. And so that is all for me before you and the support of medically assisted suicide. And here's my audience.